Okay, guys, I will explain a whole storyline of how a fat guy can become a fit guy, how a drug addict can become a normal, respectful citizen. So let's start with the story of a former drug addict. So there was this guy, he's 25 years old. His whole life, he's been living in a tough area. Only thing he knew is crime, drugs, violence, disrespect. That's all he has known for his whole life. And then all of a sudden he gets caught, you know, he gets caught, he gets put in jail and I don't know, for stealing, let's say 500 bucks and he's sentenced for eight months. Okay. Eight months. He thinks to himself like, Oh, this is just another cool thing in my resume, you know, just, you know, being in jail, like nothing special. Like I will get out, I will keep doing the same thing, you know? And then someone knocks, someone knocks and that there's a woman and she tells him, Hey, like, come with me. I'll, I'll try to explain to you something. She then offers him to work in a nice, well-known restaurant for a month. And if he works there for a month, they will shorten his sentence for seven months. So instead of spending eight months in jail, he will spend only one. He's like, like this is, this is insane. Like, of course I will do this. Of course like, I will work there and just be a month in jail and then come back to, to my boys, to my, to my squad, you know, let's do some more damage. Let's be <laughs> even more menacing. And he starts working his first day, you know, it's a nice well-known restaurant. Like everyone, everyone is in suits. Everyone is, you know, well-known, like rich guys, rich families, but they're all nice. So he gives them, I don't know, a water, sorry. He gives them water and a food that they ordered. Let's say it's lobster. And they say to him, oh, thank you very much, sir. He's like, wait, I've been called sir by a random stranger who seems to be really rich and really respected in this community. He just called me sir. And he said, thank you very much. And he even gave him a tip at the end, a really big tip. And he's like, this guy who is well-respected businessman has a nice family, just gave me extra money. Call me, sir. Show me so much respect and thank me. He was never given that type of respect for 25 years of his life living in that tough area. Even his brothers, his sisters, his mother, his father, his boys, they never treated him that way. They insulted him. They treated him with disrespect. They told him that he's a bitch if he didn't steal 500 bucks. And all of a sudden, in a day, he gets treated so much better. Like, it's complete 180. And he's like, wow. Then another day comes by, you know, another day, another day, a week, two weeks. He actually met some people there. He actually spoke to some people there. He became friends with some families. And he sees like this, you know, nice guy who is, uh, let's say, a lawyer. I don't know, nice, well-respected job, a doctor. He has his wife. He's really, she's really beautiful. Nice to two kids, a daughter and a son. Like they're thanking him. Thank you, sir, very much. You know, they're giving him high five. Like it's a nice family, they're all happy, they're all laughing. He sees that and he's like, I never had that. I never had that, he thinks. And it's such a nice way to live. And I'm being respected for serving them. And I'm taking a lot of pride. He, like, let's say the family says, oh, sorry, can you bring, uh, can you maybe bring us a no, sparkling water instead of this uh, normal water? He's like, yeah, sure, sure. He's like rushing, giving them sparkling water because there's pride involved. There's pride involved because if he brings them something that they didn't order, his ego then is hurting. Then there's no pride. So pride is involved and he's doing his job correctly. They're again, they're thanking him. They're, Thank you very much, sir. You're really, 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 really nice guy. You know, and he's like, the smile is really big. Like everything is so nice. And then a month passes by, his shift ends, he goes back to the jail cell for another month. 
and only thing he can think of is that interaction between that family, seeing how nice they're living, seeing all those respected men, thanking him, giving him extra money for his service. He's being well respected. He's being well known in that restaurant. And he thinks like, there's no way I'm going back to the same same old me. There's no way I'm going back there, doing crime, hurting people, showing violence, insulting people, stealing. <clears throat> stealing from a local business, from a local store, being dangerous, being a menace to society, basically. He says, like, there's no way I'm doing that. Why would I do that? After a month in jail cell, he goes back to working this job. He gets a girlfriend who eventually becomes his wife. He has two kids. He's 35 now. His life is, is amazing. He's happy all the time. Everything has changed for him. And that is a story of how a guy who was committing crimes since the age of five, he, he was committing crimes for 20 years. And all of a sudden, he became a well-respected man in this society. Because he saw the possibilities of a better life. Because he saw what is possible. He, he, he didn't have to imagine things. Like, if that woman who invited him to, his, to this restaurant told him, Hey, Work in that restaurant, you will see guys who live respectfully. And like, you, you can do that. You can do that. You can live respectfully. He would laugh at her. He would say that she's insane. But he saw that. He experienced it himself. He was like, damn, I'm missing out. I was missing out my whole life. What am I doing? What am I doing? And that's how he became a well-respected citizen. Another story is... Let's say we ask ourselves, like, why are so many people depressed? Why are so many young men and women who are part of the Gen Z, part of my generation? Why are we depressed as a generation? Why is my generation so sad, so nihilistic, so hopeless? Why? But let's take an average 15-year-old guy. He goes to high school and he's average. Average looking guy average grades, his family's working average jobs, his uncles, aunts, like everyone is working every jobs. They don't think big. They don't have huge goals. They're living paycheck from paycheck. And it's, it's an average life. It's really average life. And he seems depressed because he's spending a lot of time on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, and he sees those successful guys, you know, like flexing the Lambos and being like, oh, like, look at me, uh, I'm popping bottles in, in clubs. And they feel depressed because they're not on that level. And he doesn't have any hope because he doesn't see a better life. Yeah, he sees those guys flexing bottles, but like, it's such an unimaginable thing. Because, oh, there must be scamming, there must be drug dealers. He never saw a better life. That's why he's depressed. He never saw the opportunities. And I was once in that stage, I believe. I was once in that stage. But then thankfully, thankfully, I stumbled upon Hamza when he had less than 10K. <clears throat> I believe he had around 7,000 subscribers. And imagine myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this guy from the time he had 7K. Now he has 1.6 million. I've seen that guy who was living on benefits, climbing his way uh, like up to the top. He's making almost 100K per month now. That's someone's yearly goal. He makes that in a month. And I've seen the whole progress. And I'm thinking like, hmm, if that guy did all those habits, meditation, working out, all that stuff, and it worked for him. Why wouldn't it work for me? 
Why is he special and I'm not? What is so special about him? There's nothing special about him. He just did the right things over and over and over and over again. And he succeeded. And then you may ask yourself like, yeah, but he's uh, lucky. He's No. Like, he's not lucky. He just did the right things. He didn't really mess up. He was reading books. He was implementing those things. And voila, he became successful. In three years, he's now living in Dubai, in Thailand. Like, it's such a nice thing to see a guy climbing his way up to the top. He was living on benefits when I discovered him. And now he's in the top 0.1% earners on this planet in three years. But before that, I never saw that it's possible. I saw those like big rich guys, you know, jacked, like, but I was thinking like, yeah, he's scamming people. But now I saw how this guy made it. I don't think like it's possible. I have hope. Most of the people don't have hope. They don't see like someone else experiencing that life. And don't you think that if you had a friend who was experimenting with drop shipping and it worked for him, he's now making 5k per month and all of other your friends are broke. Don't you think that you would be more interested in online business? <clears throat> Don't you think that you would take more interest in his hobbies, in his daily activities? <clears throat> of course you would. Of course. And there's another story. <clears throat> Let's say two best friends. Two guys. They're both fat. They're 15. One guy starts going to the gym and in four years, he's jacked. He has 10 out of 10 body, but while the other guy doesn't, he's still fat. They go to college or university. I don't know. They're in their, like the, the dorms there and they're like experiencing this party lifestyle and the jacked guy, the jacked friend, he gets all the girls, all the girls, his center of attention everywhere. And other guy doesn't doesn't even get attention from guys. So he doesn't get any attention. And he's thinking like, well, if this guy who is my friend, I've known him for a quite long time, and he's not special, he doesn't have like special genetics, he just worked out for four years and he has ton of ten body, he's getting all the girls, I'm not. But there are other people out there who are maybe six out of ten when it comes to body. And they're getting a lot of girls. So if it took him four years to build 10 out of 10 body, and it took those guys maybe two years to build six out of 10, well, I'm 19 right now. If I work out for two years, I will be 21. I will still be in college slash uni, and I can still experience this party lifestyle and get some girls. And he does that because he saw his friend doing that. He saw his friend living, enjoying. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my throat is really messing with me right now. But he he saw this guy experiencing all that good lifestyle. And he's thinking, like, I can do that too. There's still, there, there's still a lot of time. Time is going to pass anyway. And, of course, he then starts working out with a friend. He starts working out with a friend. And... He's like, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I get it. It's hard. And you may think to yourself like, yeah, but there's still fat people who will refuse to go to the gym. They will despise people who go to the gym. And understand them. Because why would it take something that brings them so much pleasure and so much joy, such as watching Netflix and eating chips? Why would they sacrifice that? For working out which seems like so disgusting but what if we flip those things up what if the eating habit and working out habit working out habit is disgusting eating is pleasurable what if we make working out as pleasurable as 
eating and eating as disgusting as previously working out. What if working out starts to become more pleasurable than eating? Is it possible? Of course it is. Of course it is. We gotta make the process enjoyable. That's how a drug addict becomes a good citizen. That's how a depressed guy becomes super rich and with good mental health. That's how fat guy becomes fit guy. We gotta make things pleasurable. So how do we do that? Let's say that fat guy goes to the gym. It's hard. Like he, he would rather just play video games and eat. He like eat McDonald's. And then he, he I don't know, his fit friend asks him, do you want to do bench press? No, I don't want to do bench press. Like it's my first day. I don't know. I will just crush my neck. Okay, good. Do you want to do maybe, I don't know, military press? No, it's too complicated. Okay, do you want to do bicep curls? Like they're pretty like easy to learn. Like and you will have like few huge biceps. Like when you when you're like shredded. Yeah, let's do bicep. Yeah, fuck it, let's do bicep curls. They're doing bicep curls, and then fr his friends told him that you know, like arm, your arm is two thirds of your arm is actually tricep. So if you train tricep, then you have even bigger arm when you're shredded. And he's like, oh, you know what? Let's train tricep. They're doing like tricep extensions, and it's enjoyable. <clears throat> those are like not uh, exercises that you need like <laughs> fucking the best brain ever to understand them but it's enjoyable it's enjoyable then they're doing you know bicep curls all that stuff then they're doing a bunch of other shit and then his friend t tells him you know <coughs> <clears throat> sorry guys his friend tells him do you know what is testosterone yeah, testosterone is this like blah 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 blah. They tell about testosterone, all that. He said, "Did you know that by increasing testosterone, hard like effort, like hard work, feels really good?" He's like, "Oh, does it?" Yeah, there's a study. You know, Andrew Huberman talking about it. He introduced him to that guy, uh, to Andrew Huberman, and they're watching a podcast. He's telling them that testosterone is actually uh, making hard hard work feel good. And he tells him, do you know how we can increase testosterone in the gym? How, how? Tell me, tell me. We can do squats. Oh, really? We can train legs, yeah. By training legs, we can increase testosterone. Oh, let's train legs tomorrow. And tomorrow they do squats. He's training legs. He's telling them the next week, you know what? There's, there was like this research that, that says that girls like a uh, back, like a strong aesthetic back. Like like wide lats, wide shoulders, like delts. Girls like that. You will get a lot of girls if you do that. Oh really? Like I will get a lot of girls. Wait wait wait. I will get a lot of girls if I have a nice strong back, like wide delts. Like really? Yeah. Look at this guy. You know he has wide delts. He's getting all the girls. Like I'm knocking for the last two years. He's getting all the girls. All of a sudden, he's training back. He's training his delts. He's training all the muscle groups, you know, because he thinks like, oh, if I train that, I will be like, I will get girls. It's simple. I will get girls. Then let's say a month passes by and the friend says, you know what? Let's do a competition. Who can increase their bench more by kg? Let's say the fit guy is benching 100 kg and... The fat guy's bench. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> and the fat guy's benching uh, 50 kg. Sorry, boys. I gotta take some water breaks. Uh. Okay, fat guy's benching 100. Fat guy's benching 50. Who can increase more in one month? Then it's a competition. Then there's pride involved, ego involved even. So he installs, he, he was like installing his own competition into his friend. And all of a sudden his friend, his, his friend went from not benching at all maybe to benching uh, 65. He increased 15 kilograms in a month, which is like anabolic results. And his friend, I don't know, the fit guy achieved maybe 5 kg. The fat guy won. He gets, he got some success, finally. 
Then the six months went by and that guy is enjoying gym. He made some new friends there as well. They're all working out together. That guy who was just playing video games and eating McDonald's right now is just eating chicken and rice, some vegetables, some healthy fats and he's enjoying gym. He's a gym addict. He's a new gym bro. We have a new gym bro. That is the process of how a person becomes, how a person goes from shit to good. The whole process. And you, you just gotta ask yourself if you want to change someone's behavior. Like, can like can I do? Can that person do that? Like, is he able to do that? And is it worth it? <clears throat> Especially, is it worth it? If you tell a fat guy who is not experiencing uh, much of uh, like university lifestyle, he's not getting girls, and you tell him if you work out, you will get girls. Like that seems worth it yeah i can take one hour of my day to get girls <laughs> sure why not and that's the process of how a fat guy becomes fit how a depressed guy becomes a guy with good mental health how a drug addict becomes a good citizen first let's summarize he saw the possibilities he saw the possibilities and he made the process enjoyable he made the process enjoyable. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying speaking to the camera right now. I'm enjoying this process of filming videos over and over again. It's it, like it's really enjoyable. At first it wasn't, but now it's enjoyable. Now now it's natural for me. And I will only get better. That drug addict, he enjoyed serving those people because he would get extra money, he would get respect, he would get contacts. Nice networking. So it's it's all about making this process enjoyable. And of course, is it worth it? Is it worth it that I just sit here for 22 minutes and talking to you in the camera? Of course it's worth it. Maybe not now, but let's wait a, like a couple of months, a couple of years even. Let's wait. And then we'll see if this was worth it. I believe it's worth it. Is it enjoyable? Of course it's enjoyable. <laughs> Same thing with the fat guy. He saw the possibilities. He was like, "Was it? Is it worth it? He saw his friend getting all the girls. He said, yeah, it's worth it. Can I do it? Yeah, I can do a few bicep curls at the start. I can do like tricep extensions at the start, like 30 minutes workout, nothing, nothing special. In six months, he's doing full push-pull legs split. He's eating healthy. He made it pleasurable. He made it like as as positive as it can as it can be. And that is how you change your life completely. That is how you turn everything. It takes time.